In the Middle Ages, a union of two kingdoms of Austria and Hungary formed an extensive part of Central Europe. It was called Austria-Hungary, a multinational state which was once one of the most powerful nations in the whole of Europe. Geographically, it was the second largest country in Europe. Only Russia was bigger. It was also the third most populous after the Russian and the German Empire. It included many ethnic groups such as Germans, Hungarians, Czechs, Romanians, Slovaks, Poles, Croats, Serbs, Italians, Ukrainians and many other smaller ones. It was often referred to as the dual monarchy, but it later dissolved over 100 years ago after its defeat in the First World War. A while back I covered a story on why Russia was a notable absence, never got a single African colony and did not even participate in the infamous 1884 Berlin Conference. Apart from slavery, both Atlantic and Arab, there is no single event in modern African history whose consequences have been so extreme for Africa than this conference. Held over three months and attended by 13 European nations, including Austria, Hungary and the United States, the conference was motivated by greed for power and it set the ground rules for the partition of Africa. In this video, we are going to look at why Austria, Hungary, despite being a major power center in Europe, did not only have a quick but also short-lived colonial history on the continent, even though the country had a seat at the table during the disreputable conference. This is one of those frequently asked questions which without sufficient digging you wouldn't find answers to. Why didn't Austria-Hungary take major African colonies for itself like other European powers? The short answer is that it lacked capacity. The longer answer is that in terms of foreign policy, this dual monarchy took a different path to that of other European powers. Despite having diplomats and representatives to negotiate on Austria-Hungary's behalf, they did not make an effort to establish a global empire simply because they didn't have a strong navy to protect one. In comparison with Germany and Britain, the Austro-Hungarian economy as a whole still lagged behind considerably. The government may have had economic reservations about acquiring colonies in Africa unless it was within their budget. This, however, did not stop private citizens and businesses from lobbying for establishment of an Austro-Hungarian colonial society in Africa. They first set their attention to this region of East Africa, where Habsburg monarchy explorers had ventured to and reported of its lucrativeness and strategic location close to the Indian Ocean. It was proposed that the Austro-Hungarian Empire attempt to take over the region and put up a port that would aid in ferrying out resources from the interior and as a base for trade between East Africa and ports on the west coast of India. When Europeans colonized Africa, they cared primarily about profit above all else. However, the Austro-Hungarians were motivated only by economic reasons because they didn't have much to spare. So, when feasibility studies showed controlling the area would be extremely expensive and extremely risky because other European powers were also interested in the region, so they thought to themselves that going to war for establishment of a colony which had no guarantees of success would have been even more costly, so they dropped the plans. Unknown to many, the Austro-Hungarians did manage to establish a tiny colony in Maputo Bay on the coast of modern-day Mozambique through a private company with help from the United Kingdom. For a few years, the colony was prosperous, which sparked a rivalry with Portugal, which had made claims to the colony and did not want to give up on their claimed territory. They sent a fleet of five warships which forced the Austrians out and ultimately cut short their colonial history in Africa. Elsewhere on the continent, there were actually high-level talks among top Austro-Hungarian leaders who were keen to buy Western Sahara from Spain. Their plans included expansion through conquering Morocco, which looked like this on the map at the time. 
infighting between the two halves of the dual monarchy led to cancellation of the plans as the Hungarian half of the empire did not wish to invest a lot of money on something it felt would disproportionately benefit the Austrian half of the empire. That summed up any and all desired or actual colonial possessions in Africa. Other than Austria and Hungary, the Austro-Hungarian Empire territory is today divided between these countries. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you do. Also, if you enjoyed this video then you'll definitely enjoy the ones on the screen right now. If you'd like to help out with the channel, please head over to patreon.com slash reasonafrica. That's patreon.com slash reasonafrica. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.